What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to take a look at the new Hot Toys Batman modern suit with the Keaton head sculpt and compare it to the 89 version we got a couple months ago for pre-order. So I want to know, is it for me going to be this or that? Because to be honest, I am a victim of choice right now. I'm not sure exactly which direction I want to go. Do I get one? Do I get both? I don't know. I want to hear from you guys down below, but these are going to be my thoughts on the figure as well. So stick around. If you guys like the video, hit the like button for me. Of course, smash the subscribe if you're new to the channel and let's get into it. Come on, let's get nuts. I give you Ben Thomas. Kill Dad. Here we go. Okay guys, I'm sorry, I had to play it a couple times. So, I wanted to address this figure very quickly today in today's video because most of you know I'm a pretty big Batman fan. In fact, the display behind me prior to getting ready to move and packing it all up was fully DC displayed. And a couple months ago, we got the pre-order window opening for the Batman 89 suit which was of course a reissue, but some updates as well. And I gotta say, it was the most excited I've been for a figure in a very long time. Now, I know that, of course, the Zack Snyder universe is starting to disappear with the entrance of James Gunn into the DCEU. Uh, we're going to get new versions of some of our favorite characters moving forward. But I have to say, this last film of the Snyderverse and kind of crossing into the new DCEU potentially has got me very excited. And of course I'm talking about this Flash film that features a now 70 plus year old Michael Keaton. And I gotta say, I hope that I am in this good of shape and health in my 70s because damn does the man look awesome and badass in this film, at least from what I've seen of the trailers. Now, Hot Toys has already given us a pre-order window opening for this Batman modern suit that we've got on the screen here, and I'm pretty jazzed about it, but really conflicted because of a couple of reasons. So, as I said, I already pre-ordered the Batman 89 suit two months ago, three months ago. I can't even remember. It's been a little while now. And I got the gargoyle statue with it. Like I went full all out money deep wallets burned pre-order on that bad boy. And I'm, I'm stoked. But now I've got this coming. Now, of course I haven't seen the film yet. And for me, usually if I like a film, I'll consider buying the figure if it, if it resonates with me, right? But Batman has always resonated with me. I will be absolutely shocked if I don't love this movie. And the figure that we've got from Hot Toys here, I think, has some really excellent qualities. But first, we actually get a chance to see what the new Batman suit looks like. And for a modern interpretation of what we saw from the 89 suit, there's a lot here that I really like. I do think it's funny that they haven't made his head turn very well still you know like that was something that with the original 89 batman he looked very stiff when he was moving around now it remains to be seen maybe once we see the film there's some work around around that obviously with the figure itself the head does look pretty fixed in place but the mouth plates that we're seeing with this guy are actually really stellar the paint apps look fantastic i love the different expressions that you can get i see michael keaton in these face plates to be honest 100 percent. i i definitely see him in there i love that they've given us the purrs or that rolling eye system here as well because just like you can see from these three pictures he can look up down sideways whatever you want with the different mouth plates he's got that middle picture for me is what's kind of selling me on it though i can see him being in the display really ominously and just kind of looking badass and getting ready to fight right but I also kind of like the cheeky smirk that we get on the right side. Again, that's to me really classic Keaton. So that is really cool. Now, the cape is a question that I have. I'm curious how this is going to work. I did have Batman Beyond 
uh, figure not too long ago. And he also had an extendable cape that was somewhat, somewhat similar to what I, I feel like I'm seeing here with this figure. Now, I didn't love the material of that at the time. It felt very much like a, like a windbreaker, and I didn't, I didn't love that. And I never truly displayed it because, to be honest, the way that I display my figures, as you guys would be able to normally see behind me if I had figures behind me at the moment, is kind of one at a time standing up relatively you know, character posy or museum posy, nothing too dynamic. I like that this is going to be an option for the figure, and I think for the right display, it could look really cool. If you've got the Jazz Inc. Batwing, yeah, like, I mean, having him look like he's jumping out of the Batwing could be really friggin' cool. Um, but I don't have the, like, the display room in my space for this. So for me, he'll likely be more static in the display. Now, this is the first time I've ever seen Hot Toys actually label something a first edition exclusive accessory. And I think that that's kind of interesting because what other editions are we going to get? It, it kind of actually poses more questions for me uh, than it resolves. But as a collector and a, you know, a guy who feels that fear of missing out occasionally, anytime I see something that says first edition, I'm like, ooh, maybe I need to get that quickly <laughs> and lock it in. Now, with what we've seen with waitlist lately, obviously there's a chance uh, that this guy goes waitlist pretty quick, even before he ever hits stock. And I like the fact that they've given us a cowl. Uh, in addition to the figure so that you can have some posability with the older sculpt of Keaton holding the bat mask. If you've got the 89 version coming or you already have it from a pra you know past generation of collecting, you could have that guy with the full cowl and you could have this new Keaton potentially holding the cowl and really have a different display. Now, the posability here, I think, is unique. He kind of looks like he's getting ready to shit in the woods. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it's a strange pose for me. Uh, but I think what it's illustrating here is the fact that he at least can pose, which I do appreciate. Obviously, I know that the first generation 89 Keaton suit was very rubbery, very difficult to actually get anything more than just a kind of standing static in your display look. This at least looks like he's getting ready for some fighting action, or again, to shit in the woods kind of depends on on your perspective i suppose but i appreciate the fact that they're showing at least a level of range of movement or, or posability now some of the figure accessories that this guy comes with also look pretty good again we haven't seen the movie yet so i'll be curious to see how these tie into the film or if they're really just kind of obvious standard accessories with a batman figure right i mean the grappling gun grappling hook stuff like that i absolutely expect will be in the movie i mean it just will right and so i think that aspect is also extremely cool now i do want to take a look at this head sculpt because of course this has been i think the most divisive aspect of this figure so far i've seen people comparing photos of michael keaton's actual like in-person photogenic likeness to this figure and I think innately as a 1-6 scale collector, of course, we're always going to draw comparisons. Does this look like the actor? When I looked at this picture for the first time, I was like, holy shit, that is Michael Keaton right there. And then I saw some pictures side by side with the actor. And you see that the actor has, you know, subtly thinning hairline and stuff like that. And maybe not quite as thick on top as, as you know, his true self uh, or what is displayed with this figure head sculpt. But I've always felt like any time we as collectors compare a Hot Toys sculpt directly to a photo of an actor, it never looks right. Even when we've stated a figure has basically got a 10 out of 10 sculpt. Now, do I think this is a 10 out of 10 sculpt? No. I do think that there are some things that they could tweak a little bit. He's got very defined eyebrows in real life. I mean, like they're kind of like hooked, you know? And while he still can make this expression because he's a human, I do think that the standard, when our mind's eye goes to what Keaton looks like, He's got more of that hooked brow. Uh, that's something I think that they could tweak here. But does it take away from who I think this is? If you walk past this guy in your display and you look at him, I don't care who you are, there's absolutely no way you're gonna be like, that's Joe Biden, like I've heard. This is Michael Keaton, come on. It, it, it is, <laughs> it, it is. Is it the best Michael Keaton I've ever seen? I don't know, hard to say. I've seen the Mars Toys uh, Keaton, uh, the younger version, of course, of, of Bruce Wayne, and I 
like that version too. I think that also looks a lot like Keaton. You know, keep in mind, this figure could also potentially be fit in in terms of the head sculpt with maybe a vulture that you've got in your collection. A different hairstyle, again, but you could, you could make it work, right? The end of the day, I collect hot toys for essentially my favorite scenes from films and some of my favorite actors. I want them to look like the closest to a real life representation of that actor from the badass film that I loved. And I think that this is actually giving us that. But I also want to hear from you guys in the comments below, because again, it's been very divisive. I think it looks like Michael Keaton, for sure. What do you guys think? Let me know down below uh, in the comments if you can while you're watching the video. Now, this is kind of the pose that I was meaning. If you already have an 89 Batman in your collection, you can pose this up then holding the cowl uh, with that first edition cowl if you want to. I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, again, we're getting a chance to see some of the newly developed details of the bat suit here with great articulation, it's stating. Uh, I mean, great is obviously a subjective term. You may think it's terrible, let's be honest. I mean, I've got the Val Kilmer Batman, um, and while I don't think Hot Toys ever said that it had any level of articulation or that it was great articulation in any way, shape, or form, that figure can't move worth shit. It's beautiful, and I love it, but it cannot move. Uh, and so, the fact that you can bend this guy's knees, I'm like, ah? Articulation, ah, right? But... Is it great articulation? Well, I don't know. I guess that remains to be seen. I'm not going to put this guy in crazy dynamic poses. I would be worried about the potential for cracking uh, over time on the material. It is hard for me to tell what that material is made of at this point as well. So depending on your climate, just be careful with that. It looks like it could be prone to cracking, especially if you're in a really cold environment. But that also does, of course, remain to be seen. Now, this is, of course, the 89 Batman that was teased uh, or uh, put up for pre-order and solicitation with those bat computers in the background. And I'm still kind of hoping that Hot Toys gives us these bat computers uh, that they kind of teased to us not that long ago, because I think this would make for a really cool display. And if you had either the 89 Batman or this new modern suit, you could technically put him in front of these computers and still kind of make it work, right? Like, I, I don't know. I guess Bruce Wayne is hella rich. He's a billionaire. He probably wouldn't keep the old school tube TVs in his collection for, <laughs> you know, all these years, uh, but you never know. Maybe he's nostalgic and he likes the older screens. Who knows, but I think it could look cool with your Batman uh, 89 or modern suit if you want it. Now, this is, as I said, the guy that I've got on pre-order right now. So at the beginning of the video, I stated I needed to determine if it's going to be this or that or both. And when I say this, I mean this figure or that figure, the modern figure, or both. How many Batmans do I actually need in my collection? I don't know. It's a good question. Again, I think for me, the struggle for me right now is that I haven't seen this film yet. And while I anticipate that I'm absolutely going to love it, what if I don't? I mean, worst case scenario, I put a pre-order in, don't love the movie, drop the pre-order, lose an NRD, right? That's pretty low risk for the most part. Nobody likes to lose money. But if you think that there's a possibility that it could either waitlist or make it difficult for you to get down the line or whatever, you know, the 30 to 40 bucks that whatever it is for you that it's going to take to lock this guy in, I think could be worth it. Now, I wanted to show this because people have been saying that the Michael Keaton head sculpt looks like pizza face or that he's just too old. I disagree with that. He's The man is in his 70s. As I said, if I have skin that looks this good in a bat suit when I'm 70, I will take it. Uh, so... I don't think he looks bad. Uh, I think that obviously here between these two photos, you can see the age difference though, right? That the original 89 Batman, the man's still in his prime and he looks like, he looks it. While the picture on the right is obviously his older representation. Now, I think that for these sculpts and these mouth plates, I like how vastly different they are. I like that Hot Boys didn't just repaint you know, the 89 mouth plates. I like that they actually gave us something different, some different expressions. So for that, I feel like that is a win for Hot Toys and for collectors, because you can really change the way your two Batmans look, depending on how you have it. And as I said, I really like that ominous looking new sculpt in the middle for the modern suit. 
but I also really like the battle damaged face plate on the middle for the 89 like I that when he laughs at the at the end there uh, of the film of the 89 film when he's fighting that guy and he's got the blood like kind of on his lip he's just up uh, it's just prime right he looks so good in that in that moment so again this is what we wanted to see here right so the I, you know what's interesting? Until I started comparing photos, I'd kind of forgotten in my mind's eye how many abs the 89 suit has. Look how many freaking abs that guy's got. I'm like, I've been exercising pretty hard. If I ever have abs up to here, I'm gonna be very, very happy. Uh, don't worry, I will never do a Let's Get Nuts live stream and or my own videos here without a shirt on. I think that that would be weird, but if I ever have that kind of abs, I will be proud of it. Um, now, <laughs> the modern suit on the left though, Again, you can see, it's definitely an upgrade um, in terms of the, the material and the aesthetic. Do I think it's an upgrade, though, like, for what I want out of my figure or what I want out of this costume? I don't know. I am getting older, obviously. I've got gray hair. You guys can't see it because I hide it with the hat, but I'm getting, getting older. And for me, the nostalgia punch is the 89 suit. I loved the yellow belt. I know it's not very stealthy. You're going to be able to see that guy coming in the dark. In fact, if you saw Batman coming at you and you had a gun, you're obviously going to aim for the yellow logo on his chest even still anyways. And, of course, his belt. Now, that was part of the point, I think, right? If you're going to aim at Batman with a gun, you're shooting his armor, you're not shooting him in the face, because there's still a big portion of his face that's exposed. But that's every bat suit, so I mean, that's not really a criticism. Um, I do think I still prefer, anyways, between these two suits, the Batman 89 suit. But I want to hear from you guys down below. Do you have a preference? Maybe you're a newer collector, maybe you're younger than me, and you don't really have that much nostalgia attached to the old 89 film, so this new suit is really appealing to you. I'd be really curious to see what the community says. So let me know in the in the chat below, guys. Uh, I wanna hear from you there for sure. Now, that's all the slides that I have for you today. So the last question for myself is this or that. For me, right now, before I see this film, I'm sticking with the Batman 89 pre-order exclusively. I don't think I'm going to order the modern suit yet. I don't feel like I need it yet but i will provide an update after i have seen the film in fact maybe i'll do a quick live stream with marco from 166 or the boys just to get our thoughts on what we think of the film once we've seen it uh, so stick around for for videos on on our thoughts of the film itself and let's be honest if the film is badass and it really hits home there's a good chance i'll pre-order the the other guy but for now i'm gonna stick to the 89 suit but let me know what you guys plan to do with your collections down below. Uh, if you guys like this video, hit the like button for me. Smash the subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's definitely appreciated. And just so you're aware, I am, of course, going through some life changes right now. I am getting ready to move. And so that's the reason there's no figures in behind me. They're getting packed up and I'm getting ready to move. I'll have my new place and new youtube room as of july 1st so stay tuned for that because once i get in and settled i will give you guys a collection tour of the new space as well but as always thanks for watching i love your faces if you guys like the video hit that like and i will catch you guys on the next video thanks for watching everybody talk to you soon i'll be back